I have good news and I have bad news. The bad news is my time here in this beautiful little mountain town of Pai, Thailand is coming to an end. The good news is the road from here, from Pai, to my next destination, Mei Hong Song, is supposed to be even better than the road from Chiang Mai to Pai, which I didn't think that was actually possible. If you're the type of person, you're a little bit of a hippie, and you would like to kind of hang out in a little mountain village and drink mushroom shakes and, 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 and smoke a little bit and kind of just chill, Pai Thailand is the place for you. for maybe 10 minutes and I'm actually cold. I need to stop, change into my jeans and then we'll hit the road again. So we are going to Mei Hong Song, which is the city, well not really a city, it's the town that this entire province and this motorbike tour loop is named after. I've never been, I don't know much about it. This section of the video will be on my OnlyFans account. So, unless you're on my OnlyFans, you can't see this. Okay, back on the road. One thing I've noticed here in Thailand, when you see red, slow down. Oh, shit, that is sick. What a view. Sick. Yeah. Okay, this road's getting pretty good. The one thing I've noticed, it's been a drastic change. This road uses a lot of brake. It's changed a lot. I was struggling to get uphill. Now I'm, I'm not struggling to stop because I'm taking a slower pace than I normally would because a lot of these turns you go in super hot because they're downhill. You use a lot of brake here now. This is like a little mountain village in the middle of nowhere. Let's cruise through here, see what the deal is. Sweaty cop. Hello. I'm sure foreigners don't stop in here very often. Most of these people just built their houses themselves. He said flying. Swati Cop? Hello. What's your name? <laughs> Little hoodlums, man. Yeah. You are some hoodlums, aren't you? Yeah, you can tell by their houses. They just pretty much constructed shelter out of whatever they can. I keep hearing all the kids, flying, flying, which means foreigner like I said I doubt many foreigners come into this little village cop yeah I'm definitely getting some funny looks in here okay I'm gonna get out of here and get back on the road I got places to go people to see things to do most of that's a lie. Both the quality of the road and the weather has gone to shit. Look at this cool little market spot. That's random. Just a bunch of fruit and vegetables for sale. But yeah, as you can tell, the road surface has gotten really bad and it's starting to rain on me. Whose idea was it to do a motorbike tour in the middle of rainy season? Who the hell would do something like that? That's a horrible idea. Oh, it was my idea. Shit. This place is surprisingly busy. Hello, somebody call? Somebody cop. 
Can I have iced cappuccino? Iced cappuccino? Yeah. Okay. Sixty bot, aka two U.S. dollars, with uh, what you would consider a million-dollar view. It was about a fifteen-minute detour to get here to Jabo Coffee. Totally worth it. Coffee was great. Views were amazing. Ten out of ten. This is a must-stop. They also have rooms available here, so if you don't want to make the full trip from Pai to Mei Hong Song in one day, you can actually stop here, get a room, and. This will be your view. Pretty legit. While it was a 15 minute detour to get to the coffee shop, the roads are pretty good. And by the way, I'm loving my bike now. I was worried about it when I was in Chiang Mai, but this thing has been a beast. I mean, besides the fact it struggles to get up hills. <laughs> oh man. Next motorbike tour, we're doing this with something with a little bit more horsepower. Just a little bit. I am about an hour out from the city of Mei Hong Song. So I'm excited to get there and check out, see what this little town is about. I need to get a hotel and then make a plan. I think I'm gonna stay there for a day or two. Apparently there's some very interesting little local villages around you can go tour. I think it'll make for some great videos. I'm excited. Welcome to the mountain town of Mei Hong Song, in the province of Mei Hong Song, on the Mei Hong Song Loop. I've checked into my hotel, well, hotel, it's actually a guest house. There's not many hotels in this town, surprisingly. It's a much bigger town than Pai, but it's also very clear it's not catered toward tourists. This is just your actual, real Thai local mountain town. I got a guest house. It was 400 baht per night, so it's about 12 US dollars. It's not new, but it's clean. It has air conditioning, a hot shower, and it'll get the job done for the next couple days. Today, we are going to visit one of the oldest Karen Longneck tribes here in the country of Thailand. But you remember that place from last night's live stream? Oh man, if you missed last night's live stream, you missed the best one yet. Make sure that you have post notifications turned on on this channel. There's a little button that looks like a bell that's next to the subscribe button. Click on that and turn on, turn on notifications and you will get notified when I do random live streams like this. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
I'm from America, but I live in Bangkok. Five years. Yeah. Uh, Knit Nor Cup. Yeah. Uh, motorbike. Look at that, man. They carved that out of a watermelon. What? That's crazy. That guy, he's olden, son. People have said in the comments that they've tried to turn post notifications on for this channel and they get an error saying that this channel is made for kids. I don't know why. I've went into my settings multiple times and made sure I had the option made for kids turned off. I quadrupled, tripled, double, tipple, checked it. I can't tell you how many times. If you're getting that error, I don't know what the deal is and I'm sorry. If you can turn on post notifications, turn them on so you don't miss shit like that. It was epic. There are actually two long neck villages here in Mayhong Seoul. One is only about 10 minutes outside of town, but the one I'm going to today, which is about 30 minutes outside of town, is one of the most traditional and oldest long neck villages in the country of Thailand. Once we get there, I'll explain to you why these people, who are originally from Myanmar, are here in the country of Thailand, and why these villages exist. That's it. That is the Long Neck Village. I'm not going to attempt to pronounce the traditional name because I'm just going to totally butcher it. But here it is, if you want to Google it so you can find it yourself. First step, we need to take a boat across the river. You basically have two options to get here, to get to the Karen Long Neck Village. You can either pay them 20 baht for them to pick you up on a boat and bring you over, or option two, it's free if you want to swim. I'm gonna go with option one and go with the boat. 20 baht, what is that, 70 cents or something. I'll go with the boat Uber thing. Yeah, this is a much better option than swimming. That water doesn't look too terribly clean. Much slower than the 60 PSI boost, 400 horsepower turbo river boat that I rode in. The people that live in these villages today escape Burma, AKA Myanmar decades ago when their country was in massive political unrest. They migrated here to Thailand illegally and the Thai government not wanting to kick them out of their country, forcing them to go back to Burma where they faced certain death. They had to figure out something. 
to allow these people to stay here, even though they are not citizens. The people of Burma or people from Atlanta, like myself, can never obtain citizenship here in the country of Thailand. Without citizenship and actually being illegal aliens in the country, they are not able to get a work permit, so they cannot work to provide for themselves. So what the country of Thailand did was built these villages for the Karen Longneck tribe. These are the rings that they wear. I wish you could feel this. It is surprisingly heavy. So my new friend Rimu here was telling me this is the oldest Karen long neck village in all of Thailand. How long has this been here? It's 30 years. Wow. Already. Wow. You were born here. Yeah. Okay. So you've never, have you ever been to Myanmar? Do you go to visit? Sorry? Do you go back to Burma to visit? You've never been to Burma? Yes, but my parents are from Burma. So you're Burmese, but you're Thai? Yeah, now I have Thai ID. Oh, wow. So I became Thai people. Your English is very good. <laughs> Thank you. Do you speak Burmese? Yes, I can speak Burmese and Kenyan language. We use my language and also the other ethnic language. And can you speak Thai? Yes. Yes, I can speak Thai, but not very well. <laughs> Just Nitnoi? Just Nitnoi, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Same. Over the years, the Thai government, I guess they just kind of figured out they're giving these people these villages. So they put together a, I guess, tourist attraction plan where they would charge people like me a couple hundred baht, like six US dollars to come here and view the Karen Longneck tribe in person. And I guess that helps fund the village. It funds their school, health care, and pretty much everything they need. They also hand make scarves and other types of things that they sell to visitors. They hand make these scarves. You said to make one of these scarves how many days? Two days. Two days worth of work. And they sell them for 150 baht, which is like five US dollars. I want this one. I want that one. It's okay. Cup and cup. Got me a little friend. It's okay. Hey, I'm going to take you home with me. You want to go back to Bangkok? Huh? Oh, it's going to jump. Oh my God. Okay. Crazy little fella. I know lots of people are going to ask why. Why the neck rings? Well, it's just not neck rings. It's also arm rings and leg rings as well. And the reason behind it is a long time ago, way back in the day in Burma, I'm talking about like a century ago, there was a real fear of tiger attacks. Yes, like people being attacked by tigers. So the wealthy people in Burma started to take gold rings and putting them around their necks, arms, and legs as protection against tigers. Yes, that's the reason why this exists. And over the years, because this trend was originally only available to the wealthy with the financial means to have these gold rings, 
it became a trend in their country. And it became eventually something that was just fashionable. A perfect example of this is in Thailand and other areas of Southeast Asia, extremely white skin is a sign of success and prosperity. Because if you have extremely dark skin, you work in the rice fields. And the people that are wealthy tend to just stay indoors all day. So for the same reason modern Thai people want bright white skin, the Burmese decades ago wanted gold rings around their neck. Now, I will say this, this is a trend and a tradition that is dying. There is maybe one, maybe two more generations of the Karen Long Neck tribe left. Being in this village currently, I would say only probably one third to one half of the people here are still wearing the traditional rings. So if this is something that you want to experience, you probably want to do it now. How old are you? Seventy. Wow. So yes, this is a tourist attraction. Some people call it a tourist trap. I don't believe that. I believe Thailand gave these people an opportunity to have a place to live, to take care of their family, educate their kids, and have health care. And in return, they basically have to let people like me come visit their village, hang out, and talk. Everybody here is super nice. If you're polite to them, it doesn't feel weird. Be cool, be chill, be polite, and the experience is amazing. Over the past few years, these villages have gotten a lot of shit from the people that consider themselves woke and call these villages human zoos and request for people to boycott Karen Long Neck tribe villages. My thought process is this, without your support, without the 200 baht I spent going in there, without buying homemade scarves and a long neck bottle opener, these people have no income. If you choose to boycott these villages because you think they're offensive, you're hurting these people more than anyone. These people have no choice to do what they do here in Thailand. The only other choice they have is to get on one of these boats, continue down this river, and go back to Burma. They make the choice, stay here in Thailand, at these villages where they are taken care of, their kids have education, and they have quality health care. If you choose to boycott that, that's on you. I'm gonna choose to support them how I can.